authority in the word of God. Call the authority of the word. Clear who you are and you begin to manifest it. He rose again from the dead and conquered death that you may have life and life in abundance. Praise Jesus to God be the glory, honor, adoration, dominion, and praise forever. Oh God Almighty, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank Jesus for this day that he has made, and we rejoice again. And we thank you for joining us this morning on this conclusion of this very installment for this week. This is the word today. My name is Brother Ben. The word today is brought to you by Benjamin John Ministries. We will now bring you the concluding part of this week's topic series authority of the word of God, part five, praise the Lord. Authority of the word of God. That's what we are going to conclude today. And before we do that, uh, because uh, today is our increase day, we will take a moment to take our offering. And uh, we thank you for your giving and we pray that the Lord bless you, even as we take a scripture and I will pray for the offering. Shall we now open our Bible to the book of Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight, and I read, the Bible says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Your word is true. We believe your word concerning giving and receiving, O oh Lord. All those who are giving that help us get this work done, we call them blessed by the word of God, that, Lord, they will have all sufficiency in all things. They will abound in every good work that they will have all the graces of God, lacking nothing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that this giving will increase their fruits of righteousness. And we call the offering, the tithes, and the donations, and the gifts blessed. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we will take a worship song. And then as you see on the screen, that there, is, there are ways that you can give. So go ahead and give as we take a worship song. And after the worship song, we will continue with the word. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. We thank you for your giving. And now we go into the word. Hallelujah. Shall we open our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 1, beginning from verse 26 to 28. Again, authority of the word of God. And I read, and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful. And multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the will of God. We are created in the image and likeness of God by the word. Now, before that, before God spoke to himself and man became a living soul, something has happened. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. We are talking of the authority in the word of God. Authority of the word. The Bible says, beginning from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was Light, praise the Lord. In the beginning, there was form and void. There was darkness. So that everything you see right now was not there before. It was by the spoken word of God, backed by the faith of God that created all things. Praise the Lord. So, 
I said that scripture to say this to you. Creative power is reside only in the word of God. It resides in the light. Creativity. In the place of darkness and void, God spoke and his faith backed his words and he brought things to pass. And God said, let us. And God did. And God saw. You see that? Creativity begins with the word. When you receive this word of God that has so much authority and you receive it by faith, that's good. But you have to declare it, okay? You have to speak your desired outcome. That you can only do with the word of God. Creative power is the word of God. So let me ask you, now that you have been made and created in the image and likeness of God, what is the image in you? Because if the image in your heart is the image in which God has made you and you receive the word of God by faith, you can declare things and expect it to pass because God will back his word and cause it to accomplish that for which is sent forth and not return void. It's a covenant. Let me ask you, what is the current state of your heart? Have you gone through a lot of things, unspeakable harm caused by people, even people you trust, loved ones, people you look up to? They've damaged you physically, emotionally, and, and destroyed your will and your intellect? That is darkness, that is void. What is the current state of your heart? Because God is painting a picture of what can happen to you. You see, the, the situation was darkness and void, but the word of God entered and everything changed. I tell you that as we speak now, this same word of God is entering your heart and it will change that void and darkness within you. Praise the Lord. Is your heart without form and void because of the things you have gone through, untold hardship, affliction caused by people you trusted? The Bible says that, Anyone who put his trust in man has forsaken his salvation. But thank God for the word of God. Today, that comes to an end in your life. That's a good way to say amen. Praise the Lord. Today begins afresh. Today, you begin afresh in your heart with the word of God. The word, the word, the word of God will, will refresh you and will make those bitterness a thing of the past. It's a gradual work, but there is a work you must do to receive this word by faith and believe in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the word. You see, just like, get, let's go to verse 2. Verse 2 of Genesis chapter, chapter 1. Go to Robert, that slide again. You see the Bible saying, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's talking about you today. Today, for all those who are hurting, I mean, incredible hearts, that's an understatement. But thank God, salvation has come. Right now, within you, it is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is within you, moving over the void and darkness in your heart, waiting for you to receive the Word of God and to declare it with your mouth. That's the command. The Spirit of God is within you, waiting for the Word of God to be uttered by you. The word of God you receive in your heart, that you declare it. Why is this so? Why is this so? Because when God commands, God become responsible for the command. Let me repeat myself. When God issue a command, then God is responsible for that command. When darkness was upon the face of the deep and God said, light be. The authority, the power of the Almighty was responsible for the manifestation of that light and light was and God saw that everything he did was good because God is responsible. God is telling you receive this word and command the darkness in your heart to flee and that darkness will flee and light will be shone forth in your heart right now. Because as you receive this word and you declare the word you have received by faith, then God is responsible for your declaration because you are declaring the word of God that you have received by faith. Praise the Lord. And light will shine through 
and roll your heart. Who is that light? You see, the light is not sunshine. That is out, that is out there. That light, because if you look at the creation of the, the book of creation, Genesis chapter 1, light was created only on the third day. You remember that? Sun and the moon. So when God said light be, light came, that light is Jesus. Until Jesus stepped in, nothing could be created because he is light. And creativity only happens in the light. Praise the Lord. Creative ability resides in the light. So as you receive this word and you make a command that everything that is contrary, that the darkness, the tempest in your life must flee in the name of Jesus, Jesus will take hold of your heart and come in there and you will see great lights. When that happens, darkness must flee because the dominance of light over darkness is absolute and complete. Praise the Lord. That's a good place to say amen. All of this is happening in your heart. How do I, mo do I know? Let's open our Bible to the book of John chapter 1, verse 4. The Bible says, In him was life, and the life was a light of me. That light is now lighting you up. Praise the Lord. As you are receiving this word, the Spirit of God is ministering to you. Light has come. Darkness in your heart, whatever that is from, must flee. Because great lights have come. This star is now shining in your life. Praise the Lord. So that, again, let's return again to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 28. Let's return again. You see, God said, let us. So, if the image was in your heart, then there's no room for darkness. But now, thank God you know that as you receive this word now, you are beginning to be refreshed, clearer, seeing clearer image of who you are in Christ Jesus and how God intended that it should be from the days of beginning, the day that he created man, praise the Lord. So if you have that image inside of you, that image is God's image of you. And that image in you is now your dominion. What does that mean? It means that as you declare the word of God, because it's a command of God that you have declared, then God becomes responsible for that declaration that you have made. Because you are operating in the image of who made you and growing up in him. Praise the Lord. So, speak Genesis chapter 26, verse 28. For example, I am made in the image and likeness of God. Say that. I am made in the image and likeness of God. Say that again. I am made in the image and likeness of God. That is the scripture. As you continue to say it, anything that is not that doesn't conform within the image and likeness of God have no choice but to flee. Because that is the command of God. You have activated the word of God that you have received by faith. The word. That is authority that is in the word. And great light will now flood your hearts. And darkness must flee where there is light. Let's do it one more time. I am made in the image and likeness of God. One more time. I am made in the image and likeness of God. Let's do one more time. I am made in the image and likeness of God. Even if you don't have to pray, you just give your life to Christ today. Continue to say that because you begin to declare who you are and you begin to manifest it. And you'll be surprised. It's not later. God will visit you now. In fact, the first sign is the peace that you have. You know that he's really, the Spirit of God is really indwelling in you because for a moment you have realized who you are and as you begin to declare it, you have put the kingdom of darkness into frenzy. You can imagine when God said, light be that day, the day of the creation. All the darkness scrambled, running head and I mean, they must flee because light has come. That, my friend, is happening now in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say thank you to Jesus. Amen. So, you have to speak the image of God to yourself because you are made in his image and likeness. You have to speak the image of God because it's what you declare that comes out of you that you become. You can never become what you want. It's what comes out of you. Who is in you? So, say it. Bible says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. You have been redeemed, created in his image and likeness. That's who you are. Then declare it. 
let that image become your dominion. Why? Because as you declare the commands of God, God becomes responsible for that command. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. You see, how does this work? Why? You may ask. It's right there in verse 2. Let's go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse, verse, uh, verse 2 again. The Bible says, and, and, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. What, what were they waiting for the command of the word? The moment the issue was commanded, light be, there was light. Instantly. So, the Spirit of God may be moving concerning the very thing you have an image of in your heart right now. What is it you want? You want a job. You want to get married. Start the scripture. Find out what God says about getting married, about getting a good job, or whatever that means to you. The Spirit of God is waiting for you about that image of what you want, that you really desire to alter the command, the word of God. So the Spirit of God may be moving concerning the very thing I have an image of, you have an image of. So, but until you release that image through the world, through the world, this is authority in the word of God, until you release that image through the word of God, faith-filled words, very little will happen to bring that into reality. That is why if you want darkness to flee from your life, you have to declare the word. And how can you declare the word you do not know? You must know the word, and the only way you can know the word is to study the word daily and renew your mind and deposit the word of God in your heart so that in the day of adversity, you know what to do. You declare the word, and because it's the word of God, God becomes responsible for that command that he has given you, and God will make it come to pass. Praise the Lord. So faith feed words. I mean, let me ask you, how does faith come? The Bible says faith only comes by hearing the word. How do you hear the word of God? Through this preach word. And such a description by, your, by yourself. Also reading. You hear the preach word. Then you study. To make sure that what you hear is accurate. That is how you build up your faith. And now you declare. You declare that same word that you have received by faith. Praise the Lord. That is how you build up your faith. So daily reading of scriptures. To renew your mind is key to creativity. Praise the Lord. In the light. And to walking in dominion. And key to the perfection of that image that is in you. Sharper, sharper, sharper focus. Praise the Lord. So speak and give word to that image in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Genesis 1. You know. See, there are no many little details in the Bible. I mean, I've read Genesis 1 over and over. Every time it's just new revelations. I mean, we can stay only on that verse for the rest of the year. It just keeps coming. I know that I read that daily throughout last year. I thought I'm done with it, but it keeps coming back. Genesis 1 is so that you know how God created. The Bible says, be ye imitators of God. And if that is how God created, that you may tell God that you have to create with your spoken mind the word of God, the command of God, and let God become responsible for that command. Why? Because you are his body. You are, he, he is the head. Where is the mouth located? In the head. Jesus is your head. Where is the mouth located? In the head. So you are speaking as an oracle of God, declaring his word. And what is on the head now will flow on the body. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Ah, praise God. You can't do without studying the scripture and declaring the scripture daily. Words, words, God filled words, faith filled words, cost creation. Faith filled words cost creation by God. Till today, that is still how things are being done. You must speak faith, faith, way. And how do you get it? By staying in the scripture. The word of God you receive in your heart and spoken by your mouth will empower creative ability in you. And God will manifest that by his spirit. Praise the Lord. But there's something you must do. I know you are saying, Brother Ben, 
wow, how can I have that power now? How can I speak and God backs me up? You know? It begins with a step you must make. You have received the word now. But the word has to be in you. And the only way the word can be in you is to tell Jesus who is the word to come into your heart. You say, how? I will show you. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. The Bible says, For he said, I've had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You see that? Today, this word creative power, authority has now appeared to you. By grace, you have received it, and God has given you faith. You must do something now. You have to go beyond the receiving and declaring with your mouth and confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Believe that he is the Son of God, that he came on the earth in the flesh and that he is the Messiah. He died, was crucified for you and me. He rose again from the dead and conquered death that you may have life and life more abundantly. He didn't stop there. He ascended to heaven. Now he's so highly exalted, seated on the mercy seat at the right hand of the Father in glory. Interceding for you to be reconciled back to God through this ministry of reconciliation of our and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that now you, he becomes your head, you are his body, and you have authority to alter and declare the word of God. And God becomes responsible for the manifestation of your declaration. My friend, that is the best place to be. To be empowered by the Spirit of God. So, this is the way you receive. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior with your mouth. You have to say that. And invite him to come into your heart. And you can't do it by your power. He said that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. That grace is now appearing to you right now. Peter God. So receive that grace. And by faith, say, Lord, I receive. And then we say the prayer. Very simple. And you'll be in. And all of these benefits that we'll be studying all week, they are yours. Yeah, and amen. That is the privilege of believers. Congratulations. Right now is your day. This moment. The Lord has met you today. You have been blessed. Shout a big amen to that. Are you ready to pray? Let us pray together. Repeat after me. Say, Almighty Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, and I invite you to come into my heart and be Lord over my life. I ask you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we are praying. Amen. You are in. Congratulations. All of things we've been discussing this week is now yours. You are in. Praise God. God has done all things well. But there's something you must do quickly. Now, find a Bible-based church in your neighborhood and join. Get baptized quickly. And be circumcised in the Spirit. Return. Go to GoWorkToday.com and share your good news with us, your testimony. We love hearing from you. We are praying for you every day. And as God stares your heart, as you are being blessed, find out how you can volunteer, become a part of this ministry. Partner with us in your prayers, in your giving, as God has lived in your heart. We thank God for stirring you up. And we thank God for your obedience, and we thank you for obeying God. The Lord bless you. Someone has been blessed today. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's share the goodness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the true fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, Lord's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't forget on Sunday that we continue our Sunday service. Shalom. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back, no 
turning back The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me No turning back No turning back I have decided I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow Jesus No turning back No turning back No turning back No turning back I'm not turning back No turning back No turning back